Hello, everyone, and welcome to Aviatrix Office Hours. Office Hours is designed to be an introduction to Aviatrix products and technology so that you can understand where we fit, how you might use this technology, and how other enterprises are using our technologies and services. So what I'll be doing is a 15-minute intro presentation, and then we'll follow that by 15 minutes of live Q&A with one of our systems engineers. Let's just start by looking at some of Aviatrix customers. You can see here that we have customers in almost every vertical. These are large enterprise customers who are trusting Aviatrix to build out their cloud networking, security, and operations. And most of these customers uh, start in a single cloud, but have multiple clouds. So they have a multi-cloud environment and we support clouds from AWS, from Azure, from Google, from OCI, and now from Alibaba as well. So we'll come back to some of the use cases that these uh, customers are using as we go through the presentation. One thing I'd like to highlight is Gartner just came out with a report in April. Uh, it's their cool vendor report. So if you subscribe to Gartner, I, I encourage you to go download the, uh, the report and take a look at it. But there's one quote here about Aviatrix saying that organizations looking for advanced networking functionality that's missing from native public cloud providers and or those that desire a consistent networking console across multiple public cloud providers should shortlist Aviatrix. And that's a lot coming from Gartner. They're starting to recognize that cloud networking is actually a market out there, and we'll be seeing a lot more coming from Gartner on this, from this perspective. Let's take a look at where Aviatrix fits in the overall picture. Now, if we look back in time a little bit, many of you started your careers in networking and security in the data center. And at one point in time, the architecture was based on, say, a Cisco architecture. It was all about the physical network infrastructure that you were putting in place. Now, over time, we evolved to private clouds where VMware virtualized the compute and then virtualized the network in the on-premise data center, but you still had full access and control to the virtual layer and to the underlying physical layer. Now, as we move to public cloud, the architecture changed because the underlying virtual and physical infrastructure was now what was being delivered as a service by the pub public cloud providers. So you no longer had access to control that underlying virtual or physical infrastructure. All you had was the basic cloud networking constructs that each one of the clouds chose to expose to you. And those basic uh, cloud constructs were not enough for one thing because you have enterprise requirements and they were different from each one of the cloud providers. So what Aviatrix does is what you see in the red box there. We are uh, controlling the underlying infrastructure, the basic constructs in each one of the clouds. And then we are adding functionality on top of that so that you have advanced networking, advanced security and advanced operational capabilities on top of what the cloud providers are delivering. It's important to understand that this is much more than connecting to the cloud. Oftentimes vendors out there are selling products that are coming from the data center and connecting to the cloud, but only connect to the edge of the cloud. They're not doing networking in the cloud. So sometimes we get confused with products and solutions from SD-WAN providers or from private connectivity providers like Equinix or Megaport or SASE solutions like from Palo Alto Networks or Zscaler. Now, we support that connectivity as it comes into the cloud, um, and we can connect to any of those uh, edge points and bring them into the cloud. Now, we also provide solutions for connecting uh, remote users and branch offices and data centers into the cloud as well, or support the, the products that you already have an investment in. But it's important to understand that what Aviatrix does is actually the networking in the cloud and between the clouds, um, which is a little different than what it is you hear from a lot of different vendors. Now let's talk about the Aviatrix cloud network platform, the software that all of this is built on. Now this is not a SaaS or a managed service. This is your software that you license and put on your cloud instances. Now number one is the Aviatrix controller. The Aviatrix controller you can think of as the brain of the operations because it knows everything that's going on with all of the networking and security components across all of your clouds. Now it obviously talks to the Aviatrix gateways, which are our software that make up the, the data plane and provide the advanced networking and security capabilities. And this is all; these are also software that run on your cloud instances. 
but the controller also talks to the native languages of each one of the clouds through their public APIs. And this gives us the ability to create a network abstraction layer so that we can talk to the controller and then the controller understands the different languages of the different clouds and all of the different networking con constructs that uh, are offered by the different cloud providers. And then we add that advanced capability on top of that. So this abstraction layer allows us to, for instance, uh, provide a multi-cloud Terraform provider so that you can write one infrastructure as code module that will be able to work across all of the clouds and deploy a repeatable network and security design across clouds. And then our data plane made up of the gateways and then the intelligence of the controller feeds our visualization platform number four, which we call Aviatrix Copilot. And Copilot gives you the ability to see everything that's going on in the network, build dynamic topology maps with all of the information about each one of the different components, all of the latencies that happen in terms of the connectivity in there. We can look at all of the traffic flows. We can drill down into any one of those traffic flows, just all the way down into ports and protocols to be able to do application troubleshooting. So this becomes a platform that you can build out an entire network and security solution. So let's look out. Now, oftentimes we have a, a customer that, that already is using some of the native constructs and we essentially take those native constructs and then we overlay our capabilities on top of those native constructs so that you have these additional features that are missing from the, the cloud providers and their native solutions. Now, everybody starts in a single um, hub and spoke architecture in a single region of their of their cloud, but now you have the ability to expand and you start seeing now that there is a repeatable design. So you can see here this hub and spoke type architecture and I've now been able to uh, stamp that into another region, but it operates the same way. It has the same visibility, it has the same control capability. We can build end-to-end -end encryption across all of this. Now, as you expand from there, you can see that repeatable design can go into any cloud. So now this network architecture is being delivered across clouds. And in this case, you can see that it's leveraging private connectivity, maybe between data centers that uh, now traffic between Azure and AWS in this picture could, could communicate across. But we can also provide connectivity across the internet and then use that potentially as, as a backup uh, link or the primary link. So leveraging traffic engineering, for instance, I can say that my, pri my primary connectivity between AWS and Azure is gonna go across my private interconnect. Uh, but if that is not available, then take the path that goes across the internet. And so this is a, this is a general pattern that we see when people have multi-cloud network architectures. Now we can add things like high performance encryption. So all of this is end-to-end -end encrypted to begin with, but often, for instance, having a direct connect or a, an express route from the data center into the cloud, you might have a 10 gig link. If you want that encrypted with IPsec, you would go down to 1.5 gig of capability. Now with Aviatrix high performance encryption, we can get you up to 25 gig from the data center into the cloud, and then up to 90 gig of IPsec encryption for those links that you have inside the cloud, and you want that high performance uh, encryption capability. The other, another security capability that we provide is multi-cloud network segmentation. So many of you may have used security groups in, uh, in AWS or in other clouds, but those are only for that single cloud environment. We can then carry that across clouds. So in this example, for instance, you see the green dots, and let's say those are production workloads. Well, now with, uh, with Aviatrix, you have the ability to define that policy, that access policy that goes across clouds so that whenever you create a new VNet or, or VCN, for example, uh, you can say this belongs to the, the public or the, the, um, the production uh, network segmentation and then access control is given across all of your clouds in a very consistent manner. We can also deliver service insertion and chaining. So this is where we bring our partners like Palo Alto Networks or Checkpoint or Fortinet and bring their virtual versions of their next generation firewalls and insert them into this architecture. And we handle all of the routing capabilities. We simplify the deployment of that. We maximize the performance for them and the scale out capabilities that are there. And we can do chaining, for instance, uh, partners like F5 that can do SSL decryption and we can um, put that in the front of the truck front of the chain, be able to decrypt the uh, traffic as it goes through and pass it on to, for example, a, a Palo Alto firewall and go for it. 
We have a lot of customers doing this and they find it much simpler to deploy their firewalls, their next generation firewalls and use the same uh, security policies that they have on-prem now in the cloud. And as I mentioned, the, this transit now provides all of this great information that's just not available from all of the clouds into our visualization platform. So for being able to do operational uh, visibility and troubleshooting, this is very powerful because you can understand everything that's going on across your multi-cloud network in a very consistent visual way. Now, once you have this transit backbone in place, many of our customers want to be able to connect their branch offices uh, or their remote users to this, and we can carry across those security capabilities, for instance, for network segmentation. So these users come in, they authenticate via SAML, they now have access to, let's say, the production workloads so that that connection policy goes with them and they have access to everything that they need to have access to. We also support site to cloud connection, connections, and we see some of our very large customers that have multiple sites, uh, multiple customers connecting in, that they run into overlapping IP issues. And so we will handle all of that overlapping IP and make sure that we do all the necessary natting and denatting while maintaining the visibility uh, as those get connected into, into the backbone here. And then finally, we support cloud native capabilities. So for instance, if you're using an AWS transit gateway, uh, we can support the connection into that transit gateway, bring those VP VPCs in, and uh, over time, you can migrate very easily those VPCs and connect them directly to the Aviatrix transit so that you get all of the benefits of visibility and security that this solution provides. Now that's a lot. There's a lot there. I kind of walked through a lot of the things that you but understand that you can start very simply. You can do just a single hub and spoke architecture. You can, um, you can then expand to multi-cloud or maybe you start with your multi-cloud transit con connectivity. Many of our customers start by doing egress FQDN filtering in order to meet you know, corporate or regulatory compliance. I mentioned the site to cloud with the overlapping IPs. There's secure access with SAML that I talked about. And then our FireNet solution, which is how we bring in our, our partner next generation firewalls. Any one of these use cases in any one of the clouds is what you can start with and build upon. You don't have to boil the ocean and do everything. You can start with one of these little, and every one of our customers does that. You start by using uh, Meter right out of the cloud marketplace. You launch the controller, and you can very easily do any of these things. You can do that on your own. You can ask for our help. We're happy to come out and help you or, or, or get on the phone and, and help you launch so that you can see uh, how things are going there. I encourage you to go to the Copilot demo videos in our resource library on aviatrix.com. I didn't have time this morning to do a demonstration of the product, but this you can see some videos and some of the capabilities that, 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 the, um, that Copilot delivers. I mentioned many of our customers start uh, doing, for instance, egress filtering or doing encryption or FireNet, something that is a corporate or regulatory mandate. And these are operational requirements, maybe short-term things that you need to fix. But over time, those customers then see the operational control that they have. They see the operational visibility that they have. They start seeing that you can do advanced transit networking and traffic engineering. They start using infrastructure as code and, and leveraging our multi-cloud Terraform provider and so forth. So this grows over time, but understand that you can start very very small and then grow over time. Some of the main benefits that we hear from our customers are, you know, faster time to market, reduced uh, time to resolution and troubleshooting makes things much easier to troubleshoot. I always hear about increased operational efficiency where you now have one person doing the job that three people needed to do. And then from a security perspective, being able to do uh, simplified infrastructure security that is consistent across, you sort of remove that human error that may be there when you're trying to apply a security policy across multiple clouds. I encourage you to take a look at uh, a, a study that was just done by Forrester where they interviewed several of our customers and came up with and showed that we are generating about a 222% ROI uh, based on generating additional revenue for customers because they're ready, they're multi-cloud ready, or that they're able to deliver uh, solutions faster to their customers. And so this report goes into the details of how, what they found from our customers and how they calculated uh, these, these benefits. So in the end, think about Aviatrix as 
being the simplicity and agility that everybody wants from cloud, but also delivering the operations and security that enterprises need. And so with that, we'll open it up for Q&A and uh, 